G'day, welcome to Invention TV. I'm your host, Dom Schramm, with my wife, Jimmy. We hope you enjoyed our all new look intro. We've got a lot of exciting new things here at Invention. First thing is our new website, eventiontv.com. Now that's gonna be your go-to place for all things Invention, including seeing the new episodes and keeping up to date with all the goings on around here. Next thing is our new starting time, which is 7.30 p.m. Eastern on a Thursday night. We're gonna be doing episodes every other week, but don't worry, there's gonna be plenty of entertaining, informative stuff coming your way all the time. So make sure you bookmark eventiontv.com. All right, suppose we better pick an episode to start with today, and we've got a great one. How to improve your jump position. But before we get started with that, let's take a little history lesson. People have only been jumping horses for a relatively short time. After the Enclosure Acts came into force in England in the 18th century, those that wanted to follow the foxhounds on horseback now had to jump fences and obstacles to get from property to property. At this time, the principal cavalry schools around Europe were teaching the do whatever you can to stay on the horse's back technique, which involved a deep seat, really long stirrups, and a lot of leaning back and pulling on the horse's mouth over a jump. Obviously, this was impeding the horse's freedom of movement and making it very difficult for him to jump over a jump. The earliest instances of horses jumping at a horse show was in France, but once they figured out that the spectators found it very hard to watch across the countryside, they brought the obstacles into an arena. This became known as lepping, and by 1900, lepping was seen at most of the important horse shows in England and Ireland. That was until Italian riding instructor Captain Federico Caprilli came along and decided there had to be a better way. He began promoting a forward jumping seat, which involved the rider getting out of the saddle and having much shorter stirrups. As it turns out, this didn't impede the horse's motion and made it much easier for them to clear obstacles. And that's the same forward jumping seat that we use in all the disciplines to this very day. The key parts of our jumping position, a secure lower leg with a deep heel, a light seat, eyes up in the head looking where we're going, soft following hands, and a tall body. Put these all together and get the timing just right, and you should have excellent position. But that's easier said than done. We're gonna take a look at some of the common jumping problems and some ways to fix them. But first, let's head to a Shramo shout out. Shramo shout out's a segment where we recognize one of the many awesome equine charities around the globe. This week's shout out goes to Horse Rescue Australia, located in Freeman's Reach, New South Wales. Since their inception in 1986, over 1,400 horses have passed through their gates, most of them being put into loving homes. Check them out and see if you can help give a neglected horse a new start. Welcome back, guys. In order to improve our jump position, it may actually be more useful to look at some of the more common problems first. Those being jumping ahead of the horse, getting left behind the horse, no release in the reins, pinching at the knee, and ducking and leaning. I've enlisted the help of some terrible riders to help illustrate these points. All right, let's go with the first one. And stop right there. Perfect. This is a perfect example of terrible riding in that this clown has jumped so far ahead of the horse, it's like he's trying to throw the horse over the jump. That's not going to help the horse get higher in the air and make a cleaner jump, it's only going to make his job harder. The jumping ahead doesn't allow the horse the ease of getting in the air. Okay, next. Okay, and stop right there. Okay, this is another great example of pinching at the knee. As you can see, all the grip is happening right here in the knee and the lower leg is swinging back, which isn't giving any security to the rider. Okay, next. Alrighty, right about there. Okay, great. Yep, another good example of this rider is not giving anywhere near enough rein for the horse to stretch his neck out over the jump. And that ultimately is going to catch the horse in the teeth. Very common problem. Okay, get out of here. Okay, and yep, that's perfect. Yep. Great, all right. As you can see here, this rider looks like he's about to go down a very steep drop or something. This is quite bad 
when you get left behind, basically you're always playing catch up with the horse and you're going to land with a big thud on the landing side. Horses that get left behind on a lot start to get a bit cagey about jumping. Okay, next. Alrighty. Last but not least here. Yep, ducking and leaning. You don't need me to really explain that. That looks terrible. Okay, we're going to head to an all new segment and then when we come back, we're gonna take a look at a more correct way of doing things and give you some tips on how to improve your position. Welcome to Avention Quick Q&A, which is a new segment where we try and answer some of the many viewer questions that we receive on a daily basis. Our first question comes from Aaron in Fort Collins, Colorado, and he asks, how do you become a professional rider? Well, Aaron, being a professional rider is just when you earn your entire living off riding horses. It's not always as glamorous as it's cracked up to be. There are a few drawbacks. You know, it's very hard work. You don't really get many days off. It's tough to make a living. And you don't always get to ride the horses that you like riding. However, there are some pros too, in that you get to ride every day, compete all over the country, and enjoy this sport that we all love. In order to become a professional rider, I would encourage you to go out and be a working student to see whether it's for you. Every professional rider I know has started out this way. Hope this helps. Now remember, if you want your question answered on the show, like us on Facebook and keep an eye out for when we ask for viewer requests. Let's get back to the action. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that new quick Q&A segment. All right, so how are we actually going to improve our position? Well, the first thing is recognizing what is your common problem. And that's pretty easy to determine just by looking at pictures, videos, or getting eyes on the ground taking a look at you. Once you have established what you're struggling with, you have to understand that as you jump a jump, everything happens very quickly. It's only a matter of seconds. So I've found it the most useful to sort of pick just a couple of mantras or internal dialogue that help give me the idea of what I'm trying to get my body to achieve. Basically, you're trying to train your body to do something very specific. And if you're focusing on 15 different things, it's very hard to do. So find what your problem is, and then we can start to look at some of the mantras that have been helpful for Jimmy and I. All right, let's get the first rider in, which is Jimmy. Okay, as she's coming in here, Understand that Jimmy's problem mainly is wanting to be do too much over the jump. She kind of throws her body and snaps back. And, and that's what she struggles with. The super slow-mo makes this look real, it's very tough to watch for us as riders, but it really highlights every little millisecond that our problems are occurring. So as she goes to take off here, if we're gonna be really picky, you can see that she's wanting to throw her body forward. All right, let's pause it right there. So what I've found helpful for throwing your body forward or jumping ahead of the horse, which I struggle with too myself, is that get into a correct two point, look straight ahead and then do nothing. And then just let the horses jump, fold you up, rather than trying to do it with our, with our actual shoulders. Riding is a bit counterintuitive like that. A lot of things that we do, we've got to try and lean into, whether it's cycling or skiing or whatever it is, whereas the when we're jumping horses, we have to allow the horse to come up. We're not trying to make that harder by throwing our body. All right, let's keep going. So rem again, remembering that we're being super, super picky here. All right, and then let's do a little bit of, let's take a closer look here at what her leg's doing. It looks pretty good. It flipped back a tiny bit, but barely noticeable really to the, to the naked eye. Okay, let's get the zoom back out again now. And as you can see, like I mentioned, because she threw her body forward, she's now trying to get her body back pretty, pretty quickly. He's almost a little too far back by the time that he lands here and is getting ready to depart. Again, I think that it looks a lot more uh, uh, extravagant in, under slow motion, but with the naked eye, that would be a little bit harder to tell. Definitely something that she needs to keep working on. And believe it or not, guys, uh, every single rider is always struggling with trying to keep bad habits at bay. It takes a lot of analysis of your position and constantly trying to keep on top of it. Also too, different horses sort of create different problems in riders. For example, if a horse that's very, very strong to the jumps, it might make a rider tend to not have as good a release or maybe get behind the motion, trying to anticipate that big, strong jump. Whilst I'm talking, I'll get this next rider in here. 
and you, what you've got to do there is try and also address the training issues so that the same position problems don't keep coming back. Uh, it's a lot to take in, but hopefully that helps make sense. All right, so as this guy is coming in, we can see that he may be trying here not to throw his body over the jump. Let's pause that right there. And this is one of the most common problems, and it's definitely one that I've struggled with, is wanting to get it done all too quick, wanting to throw the body. You've got to remind yourself, try and just do nothing. Some of the other mantras that I've found helpful, putting the soles of your boots towards the jump. Uh, also too, if you're ducking or leaning, trying to get a lead, keeping your shoulders parallel with the ground, really testing that out. You could do that in a grid type situation. Let's resume here. Another one too is uh, keeping your eyes focused on a specific point. That helps you from looking down at the ground. All right, let's take a little look in here and make sure that I am not holding the reins too tight, which is another problem that I'm struggling with. If we're gonna be super picky here, maybe I'm a little bit late to get my elbows to open and follow the horse's mouth, but I still haven't yanked the horse on the mouth, which is the most important thing. All right, let's go back out to, okay. And as we land, my body's com coming back, you know, reasonably well. I'm gonna land in reasonable sync with the horse. I haven't caught him in the mouth too hard or anything like that. It's not too bad, still an awful lot of work to do, but not too, not too, too bad. Um, like I said, this slow-mo kind of finds every little ugly millisecond of our riding, but it's really important to constantly be addressing that. All right, guys, hopefully you found some of these tips helpful. Remember, mantras or internal dialogue is key, and just chip away at your position one little bit at a time, and hopefully it'll improve. Remember, it doesn't matter how good a rider you are, you constantly have to be working on these things, and it's always only gonna get better if you practice, practice, practice. We hope you enjoyed this new episode. We've introduced a lot of new exciting things and we'd love to get some feedback from you and make sure that you're enjoying it. Remember, eventiontv.com, your one-stop shop for all things Avention. That's where you're gonna be watching the episodes from now on. Remember, if you like what you see, share it with your friends. We look forward to teaching you more in the upcoming weeks. See ya.